Hey guys, welcome back to our YouTube channel. It's a girlfriend and go back with another reaction video. If you are new to this channel, make sure to give this video a thumbs up, share it with your friends, and of course, do not forget to subscribe. Today, I'm going to be reacting to is Bitcoin halal in Islamic point of view. So, without wasting time, let's get into the video. Uh, brother Lebron says, I'd like to know the details how Bitcoin tends to be haram according to a point of view, despite the fact that uh, cryptocurrency might probably be accepted as a legal tender and a medium of exchange. The issue of Bitcoin is a recent one which means that it is not found or discussed by scholars in the past. And unfortunately, with such new events evolving, some of them are, to some, crystal clear, and some, to, to others, may require the collaboration of scholars, economists, and people involved in such issues to deliberate and to come up with a conclusion. Basically speaking, Bitcoin is something that is recent and new. And there are a lot of serious concerns when it comes to dealing with it, whether it is from the origin where it came from, whether for, from the aspect of sustainability and security. It is known that it was founded in 2007, 2008 by someone that is unknown. And they say that his name is Satoshi Nakamoto. And this person later on, who was supposed to be Japanese, the person with that name denied having anything to do with it. Then another person came from Australia or Canada claiming to be the one who founded it. But generally speaking, no one knows where originally it came from. Not only that, when it started, I think it was like 0.1 cent of a dollar. So one Bitcoin was equal to 0.1 cent, something that is negligible. In a couple of years, it jumped to $35. As of today, if I'm not mistaken, one Bitcoin that was 0.1 cent now is equivalent to $11,000 plus. And this is ridiculous. What is this? This is not something that is physical, you can touch. It's not a coin, it's not a banknote, it's not a deed, it's not a certificate. It is something that is virtual. It all is dependent on the peer-to-peer, -peer, the blockchain, and the logarithms that govern it, which is known to only a handful of people who control it and who are anonymous and no one knows who they are. You cannot complain about it. You cannot pretend that there is justice or injustice. There's no one to talk to. So it is as if you're throwing your money in a vacuum, not knowing whether it will increase or decrease, but most people don't care because all what they're looking for is quick profit and gain. You remember the pyramid schemes and the networking schemes that have been in the past and still ongoing today, selling you a commodity that costs in the market a, a, a single euro. They sell it to you for 200 euros, claiming that there is only 5,000 pieces in the world of it. And then after you pay that huge amount of money, you qualify to market it to others and you will get a percentage whenever someone enlists in the same 
Ponzi scheme. It is all bogus. It is all a hoax. And they consume people's money through that. Man, by nature, likes quick profit. If someone with a long beard comes to me and says, Sheikh, give me money and I invest it for you and I'll give you revenue that is beyond imagination and you will sustain a happy life, I will trust him. Not because of his beard, but because of the gain and the quick profit that I may make out of it. Bitcoin is something like this. And there are, I think, a lot of similar virtual currencies. They're virtual. You cannot touch them. And Ethereum and, 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 and so many, 60, may, some may make them up to 100. And they are on the rise. And it's not logical, the fluctuation of the price. Now, is it a currency or a commodity? This is something we still have to look into because it is not a currency. It's not backed by people. It's not backed by government. It's not backed by central banks or normal banks. So you cannot say it's a currency because no one deals with it except a handful of people. Country-wise, only I think Germany, Japan, maybe Austria, uh, um, allow it because there is benefit to them from it. Taxations, monitoring, etc. And the biggest loophole in it that the price goes way up and it can also come way down. So it's like a bubble waiting to be inflated. And this is what will happen soon. Now, we all know that there is only a limit for the Bitcoins. That is 21 million of it. And once they reach the 21 million, what will happen? Also, we also know that it remains anonymous when you deal with it. So it's only a code that you're given. No one can trace it, which means that it's an open uh, a gate for money laundering, drug laundry, drug money, uh, haram money. You can just put it there and no one can trace you. And this is subhanAllah, probably why all hackers, when they do cyber crimes and they demand a ransom, the ransom has to be paid in Bitcoin. So the, the Pirate of the Caribbeans, the Disney movie that was uh, hacked and, and they demanded ransom for it in Bitcoin. Also, any cyber attack, any virus attack or threat can threaten your wealth and can take this currency, so-called currency, down to the ground. So there is a lot of ambiguity. If I have dollars and you have euros, we would like to exchange. This is permissible in Islam with one condition, and that is that it has to be hand to hand. It has to be physical. I cannot say, okay, I accept this transaction. I'll give you the money after half an hour. This is haram. The transaction is void. It has to be simultaneous. Give and take. In virtual currencies, you don't have this. The transfer is not simultaneous and you don't have anything uh, uh, um, physical to hold on to. So this kind of ambiguity makes Bitcoin haram in my opinion. And Muslims should not get involved in such dubious transactions simply to make a quick buck to make a, a quick profit. This is not uh, an Islamic concept. And one of the reasons of a lot of transactions being prohibited in Islam is the concept of gharar, ambiguity, that there might be some sort of deceit or uh, uh, ambiguity in knowing the end result of this transaction. Allah Azza wa knows best. 
very interesting i mean bitcoin is becoming more and more of a thing now tesla um invested in it tesla so far has invested in it even making it um even making it what more popular than it was some few years back someone else invested in it is it a chinese company or something so it's like now people are investing in it is it going to be more of a thing than just um an idea by some guy maybe that may have denied actually um starting this whole cryptocurrency thing what are your thoughts on uh bitcoin i mean i've heard of bitcoin but i'm not sure how it works i'm not even sure um i don't even have much information about it i mean i read articles from time to time but i don't know how much is one bitcoin right now how much is one bitcoin and i think tesla is actually going to be accepting uh, bitcoin as a means of payment someday or they're already doing that i'm not sure but i read it somewhere let me know what you guys actually think about bitcoin cryptocurrency everything feel free to share in the comment section below if there's something that you guys want us to react to let us know by dropping the link in the comment section below and we'll be more than glad to react make sure to give this video a thumbs up share it to the friends and of course do not forget to subscribe and i'll see you in my next reaction video